Although we are sharing this year's events virtually, the festival is based in St. John's, Newfoundland and Labrador, and we respectfully acknowledge the land on which we gather as the ancestral homelands of the Beothic, whose culture has been lost forever and can never be recovered. We also acknowledge the island of Uktahumguk, Newfoundland, as the unceded traditional territory of the Beothic and the Mi'kmaq. And we acknowledge Labrador as the traditional and ancestral homelands of the Inu of Ntsinan, the Inuit of Nunatsiavut, and the Inuit of Nunatuhavut. We recognize all First Peoples who are here before us, those who live with us now, and the seven generations to come. As First Peoples have done since time immemorial, we strive to be responsible stewards of the land and to respect the culture, ceremonies, and traditions of all who call it home. As we open our hearts and minds to the past, we commit ourselves to working in a spirit of truth and reconciliation to make a better future for all. Good morning, everybody. It's wonderful to be here moderating a panel on sustainability at St. John's International Women's Film Festival. And I am delighted to be here. My name is Rachel Rusin, and I am the CEO and Film Commissioner at Manitoba Film and Music. And I'm, I'm delighted to, to be here with you. One day soon we'll all get together in person. Uh, I'm thrilled to participate in a panel on sustainability. The need for sustainability is growing all over and the need for sustainable filmmaking practices has long been clear. Yet green initiatives are still seen as expensive, often unattainable for many filmmakers and stakeholders. And so in the absence of concrete industry-wide mandates and incentives, we are asking ourselves, how can indie film production ensure sustainable practices at all stages of production and ultimately contribute to local, national and international policy change? We want to talk about how these practices work in tandem with current pandemic era safety measures. And this discussion is both Canadian and international perspectives from leading sustainability experts and agents for change. I want to introduce our panel today. With us is Stephanie Dawson, producer and women's independent producers. Stephanie is a producer, production manager, and line producer who's worked in many aspects of production across scripted and unscripted long format and short form media. She's currently a producer for the PBS show Great Performances with the WNET group. And her credits include Down with the King, which premiered in Cannes in 2021, Derek Delgado's In and of Itself, which is now streaming on Hulu, and the independent feature film Maya and Her Lover, which is currently on the film festival circuit. She's a founding member of Winman Independent Producers and co-chair of the Producers Guild Eastern Green Committee and a climate reality leader. Also is Elisa Obank, project manager of EcoProd. And Elisa is a producer with a focus on sustainability, both on and off the screen. She's a coordinator of EcoProd, which she's committed to raising awareness among audiovisual professionals about their environment impact and giving them the keys to produce in a more responsible and sustainable way. So thank you ladies for being with me today. I thought we would, I thought we would start and, uh, and discuss sustainability in film production and, and really figure why are we talking about this? So Elisa, why don't you, you lead us in the, in the conversation as, as to why we're talking about this in film production? Yes, well, thank you, first of all, for having me. It's such a nice um, opportunity to be talking in Canada today. Um, so I'm based in Paris and um, the organization I work for is called Ecoprod. Uh, we are a nonprofit organization founded in 2009, and our mission, mission is to en engage the film and TV industry in the environmental transition. Um, so our goal is to better understand the env environmental impact of our industry and then to offer tools and also training uh, to film professionals to help them reduce their footprint. And so what we do is that we, we um, try to federate stakeholders of the film industry. So that means that we work both with um, public institutions, with uh, broadcasters, with producers, but also with crews that are on set. Um, so we really try to, to be global and to work with everyone to find the best solutions to reduce our environmental footprint and um, to, Go back to your question. Um, last year we released a study 
uh, on the carbon impact of the film industry in France, um, which was really interesting for two reasons mainly, because first of all, of course, it um, made clear that the film industry has an impact. So it really assesses uh, what the, this impact is in terms of waste, in terms of carbon emissions, but also in terms of impact on biodiversity and, um, and really reaffirms the, the necessity for us to reduce our footprint. Um, but the second aspect that I think is very interesting and is key in our study is um, that we really try to understand how climate change is affecting us as an industry. Um, so we can see that in Europe, the regulation is already changing and that they are taking into account environmental aspects into law. And so very soon our industry will have to respect environmental criteria uh, to access funding, for example. Um, we can also see that the environment has a fin financial impact on our industry. Um, for example, the resources we use for our cameras, for our TVs, for our post-production facilities um, are getting uh, scarcer, scarcer, scarcer. I don't know how to pronounce that word, um, but also uh, the raw materials we need for set design, for example, uh, the wood uh, is also having a lot of, um, uh, well, uh, resource problems and um, we can see that the, the prices for those resources are going up, which will uh, have an impact on our budgets. So um, at EcoPod, we feel like we do not only have a responsibility towards the planet to uh, transition to a more sustainable uh, industry, but also we need to transition because otherwise we will not be able to make films anymore. And um, we feel like it's better to act now before it's too late. I agree with you completely. And I can tell you that in my role as film commissioner traveling to bring inward investment into our province, we're seeing how the, the demand for sustainable set production in and among Hollywood or foreign production is very important. And so local production that has a plan for sustainability um, really is, is gonna be the most competitive and, and certain decisions will be made not just on provincial incentives, but also sustainability. And, and so, uh, so Stephanie, in that regard, you know, maybe, you can, um, maybe you can tell me a little bit in your experience, what are some examples of green procedures that you're seeing filmmakers putting into place on, on production or on some of the sets that you're on? Hi, thanks again for having me. And this is wonderful. And uh, Alyssa, thank you for putting all that in, in such great terms, because it's, it's just so true. We, it, this affects not just our world, which should be enough for us to act, but it also affects our sustainability as an industry. So thank you for, for um, kind of putting together the context. So, you know, I, I thought about this in, in a variety of ways. And, and I think, you know, the, there's, it hit me in so many different ways. The first is, you know, that adage, reduce, reuse, recycle. Uh, industries, a lot of corporations have really hit on that recycle element. And we're realizing that recycling, although beneficial, does not, it cannot take us the whole way. And so I uh, encourage um, other filmmakers and other just people who put on events, um, and, you know, anyone who is about to to do something that only happens once. We always, in, in film production, we are capturing a moment. We're capturing, we're telling a story in a moment and we do it once. We build these sets, we get these all these people together to do something once and then what happens? So so the first thing is to, to reduce. What can we, um, well actually the first thing is to have the intent to be more sustainable. So I, I tell everybody like from, it has to be top down, what is your intent? How, how are you going to, um, make your project sustainable and start with the hiring. As you hire your your um, your heads of departments, ask them: Do they in include sustainable practices in their um, in their work? Do do the um, costume folks are they using you know harsh detergents? How often are they cleaning the clothes? Like if, if they've given thought to those kinds of things, you know they're the kind of team member you want to have on your project. And then when you're uh, enacting uh, specific things down the line, you already know you have a partner in that way. Same thing with locations. Um, does your location manager already have contacts that can haul away composting, can haul away recycling? Um, you know, so, and, and maybe they provide uh, reports to you so you can show that, you know, not only to the producers, but also to your film festival commissioners, also to other, you know, uh, companies that may want to give you money. Let, let them know that not only are we, uh, do we make good stories, we also are responsible as we do so. 
So I think intent is the first thing and making sure that you communicate that intent throughout your entire department. And then that whole reduce word. So we're talking about having a smaller footprint. Um, I'm here uh, kind of representing a variety of different options, but I've I've worked a lot in branded content, a lot in commercials, and also in, in unscripted production. And those productions tend to be very small, and we can easily, we don't have the, a lot of vehicles, we don't have trailers, we load into a location, we can do hair and makeup and wardrobe and everything from that location. So already that's a reduction that we can, you know, we're not having vehicles idling, we're not having, you know, tons of gas guzzling vehicles on the road. Um, also, our meals, um, we can reduce the size of the meals. Do we need to have these large spreads that, you know, half of it goes uneaten? We can be more intentional about how we approach things like meals. And if we do have some excess, we can be intentional about donating that food afterwards. Even in COVID, as long as it's packaged and, and held to a certain temperature, we can still donate the excess food. So we can make sure that we're not wasting um, those elements. And a couple more things just uh, for time. Um, the opt-in model of making your, your scripts and schedules and um, any kind of paperwork that needs to be distributed to make that automatically digital. And then someone, if they want it printed, they have to uh, specifically request that. That's one thing that we also encourage people to do. And um, the other thing, if you wanna go another step further with your catering is to, to opt in for meat dishes. So primarily have vegan or vegetarian options, but then have an option so that meat is not the standard, actually a vegetarian or vegan is the standard. And then you can have days where maybe you um, add a meat dish. So those are just some examples. I encourage people to check out the green production guide. That's greenproductionguide.com. Um, that has a whole list of, of other things you can do to specifically by department on how you can um, be more sustainable on your production. Thank you, Stephanie. And, and I think what you said has a lot of merit to it. It's by department and you start top up. And, you know, a lot of these changes are very, very easy to make. And, and, I, and it sort of takes me to my next topic that I want to want to really address, which is debunking a myth which, um, you know, I have a lot of production saying, oh, you know, what? I, I'd love to be more sustainable. I'd love to be green, but we just can't afford it. And what I've learned by the fact that we do this real green program that we at uh, Mantle with Film and Music have licensed from Creative BC is that when you, when you plug in your calculator and you're, you're targeting what you're doing to be more sustainable, I find that you're actually going to save money. So I, I wanna ask you both to comment on whether you feel that um, you know, the efforts to be more sustainable in putting these practices together, is it more expensive or is it less expensive? Let's, let's, let's start with Elisa. Um, well, I, I get that question a lot and it kind of annoys me because I get it because I'm a producer and of course uh, money is really important, but I don't think it's all about like costs and um, well, and also I feel like uh, on my project, it has always been a balance. Um, yeah, like we will spend more time, for example, in pre-production uh, because you need time to communicate with the team, to find new suppliers, to do a carbon calculation, those kinds of things. And then also some things might cost more, um, like, um, I don't know, like finding a green supplier for uh, energy or something like that. Um, but then on, on a lot of other issues, you can uh, say actually save money uh, for example, if you reduce transportation um, or if you uh, work with local uh, uh, resource, like local suppliers for um, food and, and for catering. And what I also feel with um, is that we should really see green production as an investment in the future. Because as I said before, we, will, we are going towards climate change and we are going towards all the changes that are happening. Um, and I feel like if we're not investing in those practices now, we will be well standing in front of a like a massive change that we will not be able to to do because they will well then it will cost a lot of money. And um, so I feel like we need to also stop thinking from project to project and really see it as investing in a sustainable workflow and um, seeing it as an investment for future. Um, uh, project and and for producers it's also a way of staying ahead of the game and be prepared what for what's to come 
I, I agree with you. And, and I think those are all excellent points. And, and yes, pre-production can take a little more time being more organized. And, and, and my experience, and, I, and Stephanie, I'm curious of what you have to say about it, is from what I'm hearing back is it's that, that first one that you, you know, you're, you're carving out your way as a producer to figure out how do you do it your first time. And then, and then it's gravy. And, and different provinces and different organizations, as we talk about, will help tell you who are the green vendors and how can you do this. And those who came before you work collaboratively with you. And so it's really just you know, that first time you get a chance um, to learn how to do it may take a little bit more time, but, but it's about shifting. And it's about what you said, Stephanie, about intent. So I, I'm curious about what you have to say about this. Yeah, I mean, I, I think Alyssa, again, um, really hit the nail on the head. It's, it's kind of aggravating because it, 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 it's aggravating, but it's also a given as producers, as folks who need to make sure we bring our project in on time and on budget, we need to be aware of the budgetary numbers, but it is also our planet like we're telling stories here we're, we're we're not curing cancer we're not you know we're we're, we're entertaining and that's a very important thing that we're offering to the world but we can take a little more responsibility and and be sustainable as we do it so um in terms of the the cost i think um what t people tend to look at is the upfront cost sometimes is a little higher sometimes there's a little more capital investment um you know if you're buying reusable water bottles for the entire crew and then you provide um, you know, water on set as opposed to buying those um, 24 pack single use uh, plastic water bottles, or even the canned, um, canned water nowadays. When you think about the initial investment of buying the bottles versus the, you know, Two ninety nine, or however, or five ninety nine, however, the the water it feels like it's going to be more expensive. But over the course of time, the gas that's used to go pick those things up, the uh, you know, you also are throwing more things away, or you're uh, in terms of things that you can't recycle. So it's, I think, what we have is a bit, a little bit of an initial investment that might be a little higher than what people are used to. But over time, we see that that. The, the other costs kind of trail off. Another thing is generators. There are more battery operated generators now. We have some solar powered generators, generator options. So that's less fuel that you have to buy. So there, so there are things that we will see offsets. And as I, I think, you know, um, I think Rachel, as you said, when, when we, um, when you do that first one, it's difficult. But then after you've done it a couple of times, it's like, oh no, it's so easy. I know this vendor. And, and the same with your department heads. They may think, oh, buying locally or, or reusing materials might be a little difficult the first time. But once you, you, in, you, once you get in that mindset that this is the way I'm gonna do things, it becomes easier. And, and you see the returns kind of you know, come. And I agree with you, you will see those returns, but I also remind, um, producers, at least in my jurisdiction, that it's going to help you be competitive. So when you look at that investment, measure it against the fact that you might not achieve that partner or that studio production, because I think the decision makers are looking at sustainability as well as an incentive. And, I, and I'm curious, are you seeing that in your experiences? Either one of you can, you know, just sort of jump in and let me know, because we, I see that that is a big issue. It used to be when I would travel and, or meet um, studios, the questions would be, do you have stage space and how big are your crews? But I'm now getting, are you sustainable? So um, what are your experiences on that? Elisa, do you have a comment on that? Um, yeah, I mean, in, in France, um, it's really like, I, I, yeah, it's happening. Like, you know, it's uh, getting to the political level. And the National Film Board, the CNC, which is the main funding institution in France, um, presented its national policy change roadmap uh, this summer. Um, so it's a roadmap over four years to transition to a more sustainable film industry. And we have been working with them for a long time and they really saw that the industry was changing from within and that the producers and the, the directors and the crew, the film crews were really acting on set to be more sustainable. And so they really um, saw that it was time for a policy change. And um, the same thing is happening on a European level. I mean, all European um, fundings uh, have now environmental criteria, so will have in the next years. And um, so of course it will also affect the film industry. And um, yeah, so now I, I feel like the policy is is also changing. 
Thank you for that. And Stephanie, are you seeing that as well in terms of it being a competitive edge to be able to capture a production or to build a relationship with a with a production partner that an independent producer would would have sustainable practices? I can definitely see it by extension. The Green Production Guide was a, a combination of the um, Producers Guild Foundation and a group called the Sustainable Sustainability Production Alliance, uh, which is a combination of studios and streamers. And though they are partners who are pretty much dictating that if you're going to work with them, you need to adhere to certain practices. So the measuring of uh, your the waste on set is something that goes into as you're an independent production company being contracted by these studios and streamers in order to or particularly the streamers in order to, to provide content to them, you have to report these numbers. So being able to do that, already having that in, in process really make does make you more competitive to work with those, you know, top uh, distributive content right now. And, and I agree with you and we're seeing that trend. And I guess my question back to you, Stephanie, would be um, there's talk about sustainability practices on film set becoming mandated to the point that at some point in time, you'll see it not being an option. So my logic is, you know, let's start now. Let's start, let's, let's learn how to do this the same way we have to learn to change with new technology. This is part of that extension. How do you respond to that? Yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd love to start now. I think one of the one of the things that we're working with the Producers Guild, um, specifically, we, we are building an inter-guild alliance. We're working with the different unions and guilds uh, across our industry. And, you know, there's talk, it, it's not finalized, but there's talk about creating a union position um, that is the eco-PA, that is, or the eco-coordinator, someone who can really focus on making sure that uh, supporting the departments as they decide, you know, how they're going to have more sustainable vendors. And then, because it's it's about the beginning, but it's also about the end, how we're going to, um, you know, make sure that we don't in, throw a lot of this stuff into the landfill. Can, can it be repurposed for other productions? Can we sell it to another production? Is there a storage facility it, that your municipality provides so that other productions can come in and use those props or, or items at some point later. So there, there, we're moving that direction. I'm also involved with a um, with an initiative with the UN. Um, so they're talking about how they can help, you know, bring in their, you know, cachet as an international organization um, and some funding and some pull and some and some publicity to encourage our industry <laughs> to to do things in the ways that they've done with the fashion industry and and in some ways with sports. So um, so yes, we definitely. Uh, you know, now, now is late. We, we, we want to get things going, but you know, there are some, a variety of things happening across the industry using different levers, either uh, coming bottom up, working with the unions and guilds or top down with the studios and streamers and working with um, producers and production companies to, to get us to that place. Perfect. And you know, what I find very challenging uh, and, and daunting, I think for some is that when you, when you look at film production and we saw this in the pandemic, when we tried to keep our businesses open, we're, we're many businesses in one, right? Your manufacturing, your wardrobe, your aesthetics, your fashion, you know, your carpentry. So you have to learn how to be sustainable in, in multi different businesses. It's, it's not just one. And so for me, what, what, I, what I see is that it's really important for organizations uh, and, and provincial funding agencies to offer that education piece because you can have an independent producer who says, yes, I wanna do this, but then you get that how and what and where do I go? So, um, you know, what would you say to that emerging producer who's just starting and, and wants to do this? Where would you say sort of step one? Um, Elisa. Um, yeah, that's a very uh, important question. Where do I start? Um, I guess start by being aware of the topic. Like um, I do a lot of trainings for film professionals film professionals and for students and what I always start with is basically just what is climate change and why is it the topic like an issue for me as a producer or like as a filmmaker um, and then once you really understand the issue I think that you already see what you can start doing to reduce your 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 footprint um, and then I think my, my, my main advice would be to start early and to start small, which might seem a bit uh, weird, um, but I, I've met a lot of um, uh, people and producers who really wanted to be green and who tried to do 
a, the perfect green production and there's no such thing as a green production like a perfect green production because you always have uh, carbon emissions and you there are always problems i mean it's our daily jobs job to like we have problems and we try to fix them and um nothing is perfect in the film industry um so i guess my tip would be yes don't try to be perfect and start small and maybe on one project um you can uh, choose to work on transportation for example uh, you can say okay let's cut uh, flying by half uh, let's have 30% um, less trucks because we will uh, use the trucks uh, in a better way um, you know like uh, try to find realistic goals to achieve and write them down during pre-production find the, the right suppliers to achieve your goals and then also think ahead about how to uh, measure uh, if you um, if you reach your goal, because uh, then you will be able to community communicate to the team, and it will be very motivational. And then you can for the next project maybe work on um, costumes or on set design and and so on. And I think that's very helpful. It, it's to start and, and take that ownership of of educating. But there's also conversation about um, about building crew and creating these positions within a production uh, for, um, for whether it be a coordinator or a head of department in sustainability. What are your thoughts on that, Stephanie? Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, my counterpart, my co-chair in PGA East is um, the one of the executive producers of the show Bull on CBS. And they have engaged, now they've engaged a private company uh, called Earth Angel um, to do a lot of their sustainability um, purporting and and by virtue Earth Angel um, uh, basically trains an eco PA and has that person work on your production. Well, as through the evolution of working with that particular person, um, she informed us at a panel that we have for the PGA that she's now going to become a union locations person and is going to be working specifically around green initiatives. So so those kinds of things um, are happening and and absolutely I, I think you know. I, I made a joke with a friend of mine. It's like you know when something's important is when people put money into it. You know, if we're gonna if we're going to make this something that we're actually gonna do, then we're gonna need to put budget around it. We're gonna have to have a person who's doing this because I think you hit the nail on the head. Education is a really important element, and you get even the people who want to be more sustainable in your crew when they get to when they're done with their their plate then they look at the different like this is the composting uh bin and this is the trash bin and this is the recycling bin where do i put things and those eco pas um literally go through all of the waste and make sure that it's a portion in the right way and if i if i could just add real quick um i just wanted to share that if someone is is interested in finding out more information specifically, if I could just share my screen just really briefly, the green production guide is um, includes this resource um, where you can, as I was saying before, um, by department, it lists specific actions that you can take. This, this is uh, affectionately called the peach. I'm blanking on the, the full name of it. Um, the, uh, do, 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 do. the uh, so basically what this does is by department give you specific actions that you can do again accounting our department and at the top at the start of production you say whether or not you think you can adhere to this particular um, thing and then it gives you a point value and then at the end of production you you say whether you did that thing or not and at the very bottom you get a point value in this particular sorry that i'm scrolling really fast just showing you all the departments and then when you get to the very bottom when you see how many points you've earned you can submit this for the uh, environmental media awards green seal so if you are looking for specific actions that you can make you go to greenproductionguide.com you can download the toolkit you can look at case you can read case studies you can watch short videos um just as Alyssa said like specific things that you can do and see how your peers are doing it see what see what big productions and what individual productions like sesame street which is a um a lower budget public acts a public television program how they can implement it and then it i think it'll seem less daunting if you can see that other people are doing it as well that's terrific and thank you um that was going to be my very last question where can we go for more help so i appreciate you bringing that forward 
And I also remind people, you know, you go to your provincial, your provincial funding agency. So in Manitoba, because we offer the real green program and we don't charge that down to production, we have trainers. And so we offer regular training sessions to production or anybody in industry who wants to learn. Um, and then we'll take you through something that is a, you know, your, your, your carbon calculator or your, your footprint to take a look at what you can do. And, you know, I sort of, I, I sort of go back and I say, if you do one thing, it's helpful. It's one thing more than you would have done before. So it, you, you know, I, I, I caution that you don't, don't think you have to do everything sweeping all at once, just start to effectuate, uh, just start to effectuate change as we go. Um, so a question I wanna ask you is here we are, we're, we're not just worrying about sustainability and changing with times. We're now in a pandemic era of how do we come back and, and rebuild our brand in an industry that um, you know, safety protocols in a pandemic stage is, is very different. So how does working in sustainability and changing practices work in this post-pandemic climate? Stephanie? Yeah, I was just gonna add real quick. Also, if you're in the UK, Albert is a resource and I uh, shared that with the team. So hopefully they can provide the link. Um, so yeah, at the beginning of this, this huge pandemic, you know, everyone was afraid. We, we weren't sure whether the virus was um, able to be passed through surfaces. Um, so there was, there was a lot of a lot of kind of clenching back and saying, oh, we can't do the green uh, sustainability practices that we had been doing because we're concerned about spreading the virus. Now we're a year in, we have some solutions around, um, you know, testing and, and vaccination that can help you know tamp that down and so i want to encourage people to go to the greenproductionguide.com there is a link for covid resources and there it it adheres to the return to work guidelines that many of the the us unions and guilds put together around how we can return to work safely but still be green so there's things about su such as like using reusable masks um not having gloves on set because we know that gloves kind of give you that false sense of security and they just create a lot of waste uh, on the flip side, there are vendors like TerraCycle that will recycle PPE. So if your production is is um, has a budget for for that type of resource, you can because I know the COVID um, testers they have to have different gloves per patient. So you know you you have to have those resources on set anyway. So uh, the, uh, TerraCycle is one option that we found that can provide a recycling solution for something like that. You can still donate food, as I mentioned before, even uh, even in COVID, as long as it's uh, properly packaged and is is warm to the appropriate temperature. You, we can still buy local clothing. We can buy local props. We 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 recognize that um, the virus uh, does not affect us as much as through touching. So we can we can still implement some of those practices, even though um, COVID is a reality, and I think will remain a reality for for some time as we continue to, to figure out how we're going to work together in close proximity uh, with our crews. And then the, the other thing I would say is, um, you know, smaller crews or smaller uh, on set crews. So you have smaller resources that you need to support them. We now we've, we've kind of branched out. We realize that we can do more things on digital platforms. We can um, we can we can have like costume fittings that have fewer people, but we can still have like a video conferencing. So the the powers that be can see what's what's happening. So we we've adjusted. We have used this technology to adjust, and I think because we're innovators, because we are storytellers, we can continue to innovate because that's inherently what we do. And I agree with you. And I, and I think sometimes people get caught up in, well, now that we're in this COVID environment, um, there is much more wastage. And, and perhaps in, in a department, that might be the case, like you talk about the gloves and the, uh, you know, and you're using more, but you can recycle more. And then you can combat that in another department in how you handle it, especially like in a craft services where, you know, we're seeing the same thing, opt in for meat versus, versus opting out. Um, Alisa, anything you wish to add to that? Um, yes, well, I, I mean, COVID was a huge challenge, of course, for our industry and also for us as uh, people. Um, but what I, where I see hope is that we saw that we could change our habits and our workflows overnight. And suddenly there was money <laughs> also to change our habits. Um, so I do see hope for us to change our habits to more sustainable production, because that's what I hear a lot on set 
well, I've always been doing it like that and I'm not going to change it. Well, we changed it for COVID. It wasn't that bad. So maybe you can change it to save the planet. Um, and I also feel like it's, yeah, it's time to realize that also COVID and sustainability are actually linked and that um, like working on sustainability is also a way of preventing uh, a new epidemic. Perfect. So I guess my question to you both is what's what's next on the horizon in in film production and sustainability? What you know, where where do you think we're headed as we as we um, emerge? And and what do you think is 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 that same for us locally, nationally and internationally? Stephanie? Yeah, on the horizon, again, I, I would hope, as you said before, that the companies um, really internalize the um, the benefits of being more sustainable and be more green. Understanding it can be a competitive advantage. Understanding if you know we're doing what we need to do, we're doing our part in terms of um, helping the environment, helping the world, helping our fellow filmmakers. I think in terms in the U.S. in, in terms of the unions and guilds, I do hope that we see a long-lasting position. I, I think that you know. It, uh, sustainable production is not something that's going to go away. We're, we're always going to need materials. We're always going to be building things and, and, and buying clothes and, and things of that nature. So, um, and we're, whenever you have a lot of people together, you know, things get used and we need to figure out the, the mo more responsible way to dispose of them. So I hope that we do see a, a lasting position. I hope that it does get to coordinator or head of department level, that it's not solely um, a PA position as it has been uh, right now. And then I also, one of the biggest things that that I advocate uh, is that we don't ignore climate change. I think when we, in our storytelling, in the actual creation of the stories, we, we talk about, um, like I was watching The Impossible uh, the other day, which is about the tsunami that hit in Southeast Asia. Um, there, you know, it's a harrowing story about a family survival, but there's no comment about how did that you know, how did that big weather event happen? Now, I don't, you know, I don't know the origin of all weather events, but we know that we're having more intense storms. So as we have these, these, these great stories that tell, you know, um, human triumph and, and, and triumph over adversity, let's also talk about how we got there. Let's also include in our content what what it is that we're doing and what can we do to um, to advance our storytelling. So even uh, little things like having recycling bins all in your homes in the in the yeah. films and, and the television shows like showing your family as they're doing the dishes maybe you use a little less water like some of these things we can do within our storytelling also to to help uh move this move along i agree with that and the other thing that i also uh say to productions is you don't need to just be green and sustainable on you know when you're in live action or prep production that's something you can put within your corporate office you know we're doing that here too. Like, what can we do? Well, we're, you know, we're, we're managing how often we turn the lights on. We're managing all the things that we do that we, you know, little, little things. Like I always say, you learn one thing, you implement it and it just makes you more aware. And, and with that, um, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm really appreciative of, of the, of the time that you've both given to, to help educate me a little bit and, and to all of our listeners. And before we adjourn today, I just wanted to give you each an opportunity if there's anything else you wish to add. So how about we start with you, Elisa? Um, well, first of all, I really agree with you, Stephanie, on the power of story storytelling. And I feel like we need to also take into account our responsibility as filmmakers and dream makers and, um, to not only address climate change in fiction and in documentaries, but also to show solutions and a more, I don't know, a more positive future because, yeah, I mean, there is hope. And uh, maybe I want to end on that. I, I spend a lot of time with students and I guess that gives me hope because I feel like they are really understanding the issues and they are learning how to work with the sustainability issues in mind. And so well, I hope that they will implement the change that we need to be, um, yeah, more sustainable. And I agree with you. And and uh, and you know what, what's really also important to note is this is an industry where we influence, and we help by our influence we effectuate change, and and that's a really important piece. Um, Stephanie, in closing, is there anything else you wish to leave us with? I thank you both for your time, and this has just been really wonderful. 
this has been wonderful and thank you uh, it's lovely to meet both of you and i'm excited to hear you know what other entities are doing uh, across this this very important um, area so uh you know i think we've said so many things again the intention is about you know setting the intention and then spreading that information across your entire production to make sure that you institute these sustainable practices i think trying one thing recognizing you don't have to take everything on at once uh is, is a very important um step that we can all take and to know that we won't be discouraged if we do try to do just one thing uh each each uh, production and then like like everything else you learn and then you'll you'll do it again and then it becomes second nature um i just again encourage people to check out the green production guide another initiative we're doing is the green film school alliance so going into colleges um and universities and, and film schools around the country um and hopefully you know around the world we will encourage uh those who are going to be the future story storytellers to implement this kind of uh, production early on so that they as that generation um progresses into the industry the, this becomes commonplace so um so yeah just you know use your resources thank you all for for attending and i hope that you know good luck to you on your films and and i hope that those of you who are young people who haven't uh, who are still coming into the industry check out the green production guide the uh, green uh, school alliance and and uh, i hope that we will see many more of you in future years to come perfect thank you both for your time today and uh, let's just keep collaborating and and keep working strong as we are as an industry to effectuate this change locally for all of us nationally and internationally and um, enjoy the rest of the festival everybody <laughs>